Well, hello, dudes and dudettes. So, here's me and my pack. We are playing in the middle of the street, as you can see. So, yeah, it's snowing. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful today. Because it's not freezing cold like 2 degrees yesterday. Like, it was actually negative 10 at one point. Um, I think it's probably 20 degrees now. Which, seriously, I've gotten so used to it. I'm like, 20 degrees? Oh, that's nothing. But, um, you must be thinking, how can I make all these videos every day now? For the last four days or three days in a row, I've made videos and I'm not going to be making video today for sure because I finally finished my first draft of Mahathashas at the Speed of Light, the book that I've been writing for the past year, year and a half. So finally, because I was waking up early, like 5.30, 6, then going to sleep at like 1 a.m., trying to finish that because uh, I was working in the middle, doing other things, taking care of the kids, family. So... And then I was like, man, I got to shoot videos. So I was like making videos once or twice a week. But now it's finally, you know, on an everyday uh, a cycle, hopefully, because, you know, the book is finally done. And now I just have to polish it, do the graphics, uh, which is still going to take time. But at least the meat is done. We just have to make the roti now and, and rice. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen. So uh, welcome to a beautiful snowy day here in Washington DC and uh, today we are going to be talking about the transit of Venus moon and Mercury because as much as I announced last week that oh we're done with our transit series I still uh, realized that uh, actually somebody reminded me thank you for that that I still needed to cover these three planets for transit now this should tell you something about the transit of these three planets. Why did I forget? Because see, the thing is, the planets with the longer orbits, the planets, the shadow points, Rahu, Ketu, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, they have a much more profound effect in our life that we notice. And here's the key word, notice. Do not think that moon transit is not important or Mercury transit is not important or Venus transit is not important. The thing is, the things that we feel, especially when we turn to astrology, are the things that are brought about by the transit of Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury and Venus. And this is why we are naturally inclined to study these transits. Because these are the planets that are natural malefics and natural benefics like either they are great benefics we feel it or they're natural malefic like we feel that uh the hard side of life with their transit so this is why naturally it was easy for me to forget that oh they're not important but no they're important but the reason why we tend not to uh you know pay more attention to them is because these are very quick moving planets especially moon transits every sign within two and a half days and mercury and venus they transit each sign uh, within a month or less than a month because of the fact they're closer to the orbit or they're closer to the earth and this is why you know their transit is not felt on a severe level the only time you will feel their transit okay is if you actually note down every day the events that you run into. So the events that you run into every day, if you note them down for a whole month, that's when you will realize that, hey, okay, I do see it uh, affecting my life. But on a mundane basis, we just forget what is, uh, you know, especially Moon and Venus are doing because Mercury, we do feel it due to his retrograde, because Mercury is retrograde four times in a year. That's where we feel that, oh, yeah, I miscommunicated that or this machine failed or, you know, uh, something that I wanted to start just couldn't start. It's just giving me a hard time. Why? And then you realize, oh, it was Mercury retrograding. So let's just in a brief quickly discuss the transit of these three planets and what they do when they transit on a house or over other planets. So as you know, you have to note down the events. Of how you think every day because when moon transits for two and a half days in each sign or a house it's a very it's quickly moving so if yesterday you felt depressed today you feel a little bit better 
or in the next day you feel even much better and then you notice is the moon transiting in the sign of Scorpio Taurus Gemini and especially the house rulership that you have in your birth chart of the moon like if moon is transiting the fourth house second house third house it is very hard to see the effects of the moon individually now you know in astrology there are brilliant astrologers that can tell you the date of your marriage or a job this day it will happen and this requires the most difficult study of the transit of mercury venus and moon because sure you align the events by jupiter and saturn and Rahu let's say then you narrow it down with the transit of Mars the transit of action like the action of getting a job action of marriage then it comes time to okay which house the Venus is going to transit where the marriage can happen and Mercury will communicate the message of uh, marriage happening and moon will actually do that so this is why it's difficult but the thing you want to realize especially with moon is that moon transit cannot be studied alone you get unless you do day-to-day -day moon transit okay so the moon is transiting in the sign of Scorpio in your eighth house yes that two and a half days you may have some thoughts you may have some uh, a little bit of a depression and anxiety that you will feel but then it'll quickly go away so this is why it's a very quick moving transit that may not have the most uh, important impact then comes Mercury Mercury is a messenger Mercury's point is to uh, relay a message to us that look this is what's going on let's do this let's not do this so especially mercury transit becomes very important when it's retrograde let's say if it's uh, transiting your fourth house and it's retrograde in this time period if you have to sign some contract related to property or you're trying to purchase a vehicle you might then want to wait if it's uh, uh, you know until it's direct because that uh, property deal may not go through because of the miscommunication or you didn't cross the uh, T or dotted your I's so that's why the transit is becomes important of Mercury and you know if Mercury is transiting your seventh house then you will be more emphasizing communicating with your spouse communicating with your uh, other half or your business partnerships so Mercury's transit you know which occurs in less than a month it's really puts them you know like if you do notice if you write down all your events for just two months you will see the days and don't look at your horoscope okay or try it on somebody else write down exactly what they're tell them to just write down their events and then look at their chart see when mercury was transiting a certain house were they're more communicating or focused on the matter of children relaying the message to the children okay or trying to find what's happening with the children because it was transiting the fifth house if it was retrograde there was miscommunication between you and your children perhaps you got into arguments with your children if there was a malefic planet present in your fifth house because mercury or venus or moon when they go over a certain planet they will emphasize mind communication and ability to love depending upon which planet they're transiting what planet they're uh transiting over oh in case of venus transits you know your horoscope and let's say you got Saturn in the seventh house Venus transits in the seventh house okay you will try to not be so cold in your approach to marriage and relationships as much as you are a very much a workaholic you're all about finding that realistic approach in relationship Venus is a soft planet of love and romance so what Venus does and tells Saturn for that month or those 24 days that hey let me just communicate with my spouse and tell her how much I love him or her I haven't done that for a long time and let me you know um, make that connection with them that I'm supposed to make so that's what happens with uh, Venus is transiting and this is the same scenario with a whatever house is transiting transits your fourth house there's gonna be more emphasis towards finding comfort at home uh, finding the joy and being in home cooking you know enjoying foods now if Venus is retrograde what will happen naturally Venus's significance is love marriage relationships you're gonna in those time periods you may question 
your relationship. You may question, you know, the person that you're with. Are they it? If you're in marriage, you will be not feeling that comfort that you may have felt unless Venus is in its own sign. If Venus is in its own sign, Taurus and Libra and retrograding there, you will be hungry for a relationship and love with your spouse, with a girlfriend, or just trying to go on a date. So that becomes the focal point because when it's retrograding, it's, it's, its energy is closer to the earth. So you're looking for that in a positive way. Venus is debilitated and it's transiting. You will feel more questions and concerns about your ability to love or receive love. Perhaps during that period, you may have arguments with your spouse. You may become too practical about love and relationships. If it's retrograding and debilitated, those are the scenarios where like, a person may feel like, oh, I need to end this relationship, or I need to do this, or I just wanna get away from this person. But the thing is, we have to see the bigger transits of Jupiter, Saturn, Mars. Are they really initiating the action that Venus wants to take? Otherwise, you'll just be thinking within your head, maybe I should break up, or maybe I really need to go on a date. You know, I need to really wine and dine someone or be wine and dine. So it's uh, these three planetary transit, like I said, cannot be studied alone. You can't just say, okay, this is transiting on here. This is what will happen. No, you got to judge it with the nodes, Rahu Ketu. You got to judge it with transit of Jupiter, Saturn, the double transit and Mars, the transit of action. Okay. So guys, this was my quick analysis of, you know, studying these three transit and it's very basic. I don't need to go over a house and sign for each planet. You just need to realize that your basic concept and work with that concept, okay? So if you're new to my channel, subscribe below. Again, if you wanna know where your Venus, Mercury, Moon are placed and where they might be transiting, all the other planet replacements, for that, check out the links here. Check out my full astrological report, including my books, Astrology, Conjunction, and Aspects of the Speed of Flight, including all my consultations at this link. Otherwise, I'm gonna enjoy this snow.